In this module, we will study for the first time the electronic structure of molecules. Till now, we have studied some model systems and we have also studied quantum mechanically the hydrogen atom. And we could also see that hydrogen atom is the only chemical system for which Schrodinger equation can be solved exactly. For all other systems, we apply approximate methods. We have also studied about approximate methods, namely perturbation theory and the variation method. So in this case today, we will apply variation theorem to study the electronic structure of molecules. And you will see that we not only get the expression for electronics energy of the molecules, but we also get an insight into the molecule formation. Or in other words, we can say that we get a lot of information about the theories of chemical bonding in molecules. You have already studied at school level even. And I'm sure at undergraduate level about the two theories of bonding, namely the molecular orbital theory and valence bond theory. These theories ultimately come from quantum mechanics. It's basically the physical interpretation of quantum mechanical construction of the wave function that gives rise to these two theories. As you know, valence bond theory was developed by Hitler and London and it was later on modified by Slater and Pauling. On the other hand, the molecular orbital theory basically owes its genesis to the efforts of Hund, Mulliken, Leonard Johns, etc. So, but before we see how we get the electronic structure of molecules, let's focus on one very important approximation and that is born oppenheimer approximation. Now what is this approximation? This approximation basically means that in any molecule we have a nuclei as well as electrons and the nuclei as you know are much more massive than electrons and therefore they can be assumed to be at rest that means stationary. That's basically the basic concept of born oppenheimer approximation. If you remember, even in hydrogen atom, we separated nuclear motion from electronic. And the basic principle was the same born oppenheimer approximation. And therefore, we can say that once the nuclei are assumed to be stationary, electrons move relative to the nuclei. And that's basically the meaning of the born oppenheimer approximation. Let's see how we apply it in the quantum mechanical treatment of molecules. Before we study molecules quantum mechanically, the first step, as you know very well, is to write down the Schrodinger equation for the molecule. And writing the Schrodinger equation would ultimately mean writing Hamiltonian for the molecule. We will assume nuclei and electron to be the point masses and then one will notice that the corresponding Hamiltonian which is the total energy operator for the molecule would be as you can see here it has minus h cross square by 2 summation Laplacian a square upon ma then minus h cross square upon 2, then mass of electron, and then summation Laplacian i square. And then we have summation a and summation b, b greater than a, z a, z b, e square upon r a b, minus summation a, summation i, z a, e square upon r i a, and plus summation i summation j i greater than j e square by r i j 
these are the total terms in the Hamiltonian and you can very well understand the significance of this this we have done earlier also the first term on the right hand side represents basically to the kinetic energy of nuclei a and b refer to nuclei the second term represents the kinetic energy of electron so i and j refer to that the third term as you can see is the nuclear repulsion term and rab as it's coming it is the distance between the two nuclei a and b the fourth term which is negative that refers to the attraction or potential energy of attraction between the electron and the nuclei and the last term is positive again and that is the electronic repulsion between any two electrons so this is the total hamiltonian now once we have written the hamiltonian now the question comes how to proceed further now if this general expression for the hamiltonian if we write it for a simple molecule like h2 where a and b say represents the two protons and one and two refer to two electrons and mp is the mass of the proton and me is the mass of the electron then the corresponding hamiltonian looks like this you can see each term is very clear the first term is the kinetic energy of the proton a second term is kinetic energy of the proton b then we have the kinetic energy of electron 1 then we have kinetic energy of electron 2 after that we have the nuclear repulsion between the two nuclei or between the two protons then we have potential energy of attraction between the nucleus a and electron 1 the next is potential energy of attraction between the nucleus b and electron 1 then we have the potential energy of attraction between the nucleus a and electron 2 and then potential energy of attraction between the nucleus b and electron 2 and lastly we have the electronic energy of repulsion between the two electrons one and two so this is the hamiltonian and using this hamiltonian one can write the total schrodinger equation as it has been shown here where qi and qn will symbolize the electronic and nuclear coordinates in general now you know as i said that nuclei are much more massive than electrons therefore we will assume these nuclei say in hydrogen molecule to be at rest and therefore the first two terms which refer to the kinetic energy of the two protons can be neglected as a result the corresponding hamiltonian modifies to the following form and that is minus h cross square by 2 del 1 square then we have divided by me minus h cross square by 2 me del laplacian operator del 2 square plus e square by rab minus e square by r1a minus e square by r1b minus e square by r2a minus e square by r2b plus e square by r12 so this becomes the corresponding modified Hamiltonian and if in this Hamiltonian we separate the nuclear energy of repulsion that means potential energy of repulsion between the two nuclei that is the third term from the right hand side then if we remove that then we have the electronic Hamiltonian as you can see and therefore our total Schrodinger equation becomes H electron cap which is the electronic Hamiltonian plus V n cap this is the potential energy of repulsion between the two nuclei then this operates on psi electrons to give you EE psi electronics so that's now 
the modified form of our Schrodinger equation. And please remember, we have now obtained this form after applying the born oppenheimer approximation. Now in this equation, as you can see, Vn is the term which has been separated out and that is the potential energy of repulsion between the two nuclei A and B. And Ee is the electronic energy and Psi El is the corresponding electronic wave function. Now, you know this internuclear distance RAB will have a fixed value assigned to it. So that's basically therefore a large number of configurations are possible where RAB is varied and for each RAB we calculate the corresponding electronic energy and the we normally then plot electronic energy as a function of RAB and thus we will ultimately get the minimum electronic energy which will correspond to the most stable nuclear configuration. Now you can see from here that our electronic Schrodinger equation which is basically the function of the electronic coordinates will be this h electronic psi electronic is equal to e electronic psi electronic. Now we need to solve this equation somehow and once we solve it we will get the purely electronic energy and to this electronic energy we will add the potential energy of repulsion between the nuclei which we separated earlier and which we gave the name Vn that was you know we have already separated it out. Now the question comes how to solve this electronic Schrodinger equation for a given nuclear configuration. That's a big problem. As we have already mentioned in our earlier modules that these equations because of the presence of the electronic repulsion terms cannot be exactly solved. Therefore we need to apply approximate methods and as you will see we will apply variation theorem to solve this electronic Schrodinger equation for the molecules. Now how do we apply variation method? Variation method as you know one has to basically construct an approximate wave function and this psi electronic Ultimately, that is our purpose to obtain. We will obtain phi A, which is electronic wave function for the molecule. And there will be two approaches which we will be using to construct this approximate electronic wave function. One approach, as you will see in the subsequent modules, will be known as molecular orbital approach. There will be one way of constructing approximate wave function for this and secondly there will be another approach which will be called the valence bond approach that will also ultimately construct this electronic wave function in an approximate way then after constructing this approximate electronic wave function we will apply variation theorem and find out the total electronic energy for the molecule. That's basically our whole approach would be. So our next few modules will be devoted to these two theories. And once we have got the total electronic energy and once we have constructed the approximate wave function, then we will give them a physical interpretation. That will be basically what you have already learned about valence bond theory and molecular orbital theory in your curriculum. So in this module today, we have studied how molecules can be treated quantum mechanically. Our aim is to find out the electronic structure of the molecules. We wrote the total Schrodinger equation for the molecules and then we applied Born-Oppenheimer approximation 
which basically takes into account the fact that the nuclei being much more massive than the electrons, they can be assumed to be at rest or stationary and therefore electrons can be considered to be moving relative to the nuclei. We made this assumption and then simplified our electronic Schrodinger equation. The equation which we got ultimately was electronic Schrodinger equation but then this equation cannot be solved exactly because of the presence of the electronic repulsion terms. Therefore we have already proposed that we propose to construct approximate electronic wave function and the two approaches which will be used in the subsequent modules namely the molecular orbital approach and the valence bond approach will ultimately aim at constructing this approximate wave function and then using the variation theorem calculate the corresponding electronic energy.